Welcome back. You guys probably see comments like this on like TikTok, Instagram, and you know, any place where there's coding discourse, mostly just TikTok. But you might see this stuff everywhere and like people are like, oh, I want to learn binary or like, oh, I code in binary. And I mean, the, the title of this video is a little bit clickbait, but um, well, seeing all this, despite most of the time it being a joke and other times it being just people not understanding what they mean by binary. Is it actually possible? Can you do it? Well, the answer is, yeah, you can, but sort of. I'll get into why I say sort of. You have to go through a list of caveats. There's no such thing as a universal binary. When people talk about binary in the sense of coding in binary, they mean coding in raw machine code. Binary is a way to represent data, right? Binary, you can represent text in binary. You can represent images in binary. So when people say binary, they mean machine code. And I will always put binary in quotes because that's technically not the right usage of it. I know I'm being very like, like keen on semantics, but just for the sake of this video, I want to be technically correct. And when I say machine code, there's an instruction set which basically defines what these individual bytes, what a sequence of bytes represent and cause to happen inside that CPU. And these instructions are encoded in a sequence of bytes. So again, this is the binary that we refer to or the machine code. Now, before we start, we're going to outline a bunch of constraints on that teaching you how to write code and binary on every single machine and now you're like trying to do this on every machine and like your laptop or phone or whatever. We're only talking about MIPS 32. This is the specific instruction set that we're going to be working with. This is specific for the MIPS architecture. This, you likely won't actually come across this until you dig into your closet and find your old PS2 because the PS2 uses the MIPS architecture. I don't really think a lot of your guys' machines that you guys use are going to be using MIPS. At most, they may use ARM and x86, and yeah, honestly, that's about it. And maybe RISC-V? I don't know. But definitely ARM and x86. x86 for your desktops and laptops, and ARM for your laptops and um, phones. And we also don't care about endianness, which if you don't know what that means, it means the order of how bytes are arranged. So let's get started. We're going to talk about the add instruction and to visualize what this instruction does is basically just this. It adds T1, T2, stores it in T0 where the T1s and 2s are registers. Now in MIPS, Every instruction is four bytes long, and there are three kinds of instruction formats, R, I, and J. And each register has a number associated with it. And before I actually continue, I don't know which revision of MIPS 32 I'm looking at. I found a PDF. I'm just going off of it. Um, I, I think, honestly, any MIPS 32 will work, but because we're going over very trivial instructions. So back to what I was saying, let's focus on that each register has a number associated with it. When we refer to T0, T through T7, A0, A3, V0, V1, all these um, instructions, sorry, not instructions, registers, they have a number associated with them. And for our T0 to T7, the numbers 8 through 15 are associated with them. So now that we know that, let's go back and focus on that second point of our different instruction formats and these can be r type i and j type r types traditionally i mean not traditionally i don't even know what i'm saying uh work on registers only and i's i types work with immediate values and j's work with addresses like jumping to an address or such now, what kind is add? We went over three, so let's take a look. It's the R type. And this screenshot that I took kind of tells us how our instruction will be encoded. And we can bring that format 
next to it and then you can actually see that the opcode zero and where it goes and the hex funct where it goes and um, the RD, RS, RT, where they belong. The sh shamped or the shift amount is going to be zero because we're not using that. But you can now see how the add instruction in a readable assembly will look like in the actual raw bytes. And here I've like put arrows and boxes so you can really focus and see what corresponds with what. But let's go back to our instruction and readable machine code or our assembly. Let's bring back the formats and let's bring back everything else that we covered. And let's get to work. Well, not really because I, I did the work, but let's try to understand what this does. So on the very, the screenshot over there where it says core instruction set, uh, you can see that the opcode is zero. And the funct is 20 in hex, which is 32 in decimal, which is one and followed by five zeros in binary. So we can see we've figured that out. This isn't a shift instruction, so we are not using shift amount. So it's all zeros. And then we have RSRTRD. Well, if you take a look at that little range that we were given, the T0 corresponds with eight, T1 corresponds with nine, and T, uh, T2 corresponds with 10. As you can see on the bottom, RS being one of the source registers is T1. And T1 is, well, nine. You can read that in binary, that's nine. RT is corresponding to T2, and T2 is 10, and that's 10 in binary. RD is corresponding to T0, and that's um, eight in binary over there. So you can kind of start to piece together what's going on. And to make this settle in even more, I've swapped around the colors so you can see where they correspond with what. And we can just squish them together. Finally, we can put them as hexadecimal as a more condensed way to write our assembly instructions. These two mean the exact same thing, and if you don't believe me, you can go into any disassembler online or even on your system. You don't have to have like a MIPS disassembler to do this, but in Little Endian and Big Endian, those bytes that we wrote, they correspond directly to that instruction. So, yay, we wrote in binary or whatever that is. Now, why did I say sorta? Well, it's possible, but it's not feasible. You gain absolutely no benefit from doing this. The only situation I see this even happening is if you are making a CPU from scratch. And that's the only time where I would see you're writing in binary, which is a great exercise, but I'm talking in general development, right? You're like, oh, this program is running slow. Assembly's not cutting it. Let me just go to raw binary. You're not gaining any benefit from that like zero, because those assembly instructions map exactly one-to-one, -one. well, not one-to-one, -one, but they are mapped directly to those four bytes, right? Unless the instruction set is a absolute nightmare, and for some reason you can like gain some performance by writing it in binary, which I don't see that ever happening. There's no real purpose for coding in binary. Again, aside from if you're writing your own instruction set and you're writing your own little CPU, that's definitely cool. And that is where you would write in binary. And like I said before, again, the assembly maps to those encoded instructions. And yeah, that's about it. I know the title is a little bit clickbait, um, but technically you can. You can write in binary if you have some knowledge about how these instructions work you can pull up that instruction table and be like okay adding in this register and memorizing the instruction numbers you could definitely do this but not feasible and definitely has no purpose unless you're making that cpu yourself so yeah that's about it thank you guys for watching let me know what you guys think and as always i love you guys' feedback let me know what i should do next 
And again, sorry for not uploading very often. Um, school started and, you know, I'm very busy now. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Bye.